What is going on there, citizens of the Reject Nation? Greg here today. So, I am going to be doing a movie reaction today for The Green Mile because I put out three movies on the community post and you guys voted and this was easily the top vote, which uh, I feel is apt because, you know, like I've been catching up on some classic films. So I watched, you know, Forrest Gump here on the channel starring Tom Hanks. And then I watched Shawshank Redemption eventually, which is directed by Frank Darabont, taking place in a prison. And now I learned this today, like Frank Darabont, he directed this movie and it stars Tom Hanks. So it feels like it's, it's completing some weird trilogy of sorts. Uh, I'm excited to check it out. If you can, I know you can, leave a like. That'd be very much appreciated. Also, subscribe and click the notification bell. We are planning on covering more movies on this channel, even the ones that uh, did not get the number one vote. I do want to actually get around and watching those as well. And also, full-length reaction watch-alongs where you sync up with your own copy for The Green Mile and along with a bunch of other movies and shows that we cover here on the channel or over at our Patreon page for Super Sexy Rejects. And there's also shows over there where they are exclusively covered at our Patreon with reaction highlights and watch-alongs included. Lastly, thank you to the team at Prepper for helping us edit this down. It's a long movie. So I just got to settle in, relax, and then uh, see what evokes a reaction. Let's get to it. Oh, shit. Is that Sadler again? What? You look tired, you're not yourself. I just didn't sleep well, so I had a few bad dreams. It happens. I'll be fine. What what did you dream about? Seem to vanish like a gambler's lucky streak. Oh, what's what's going on, man? <laughs> Is he supposed to be like Tom Hanks? Doing one of those Saving Private Ryan things. I know that wasn't Tom Hanks at the beginning of Saving Private Ryan. I ever tell you that I was a prison guard during the Depression? Did I mention that I was in charge of death row, that I supervised all the executions? Yikes. Death row was called the last mile. We called ours the green mile. All right. You all right in there? <coughs> Pissing razor blades, yeah. Oh. God, I've never had a UTI. They've never sounded pleasant. Dead man walking here. Dead man. We got a dead man walking here. My God, dude. I'm not going to have any trouble with you, big boy. Can you talk? Yes, I boss. I can talk. Man, rest in peace, Michael Clark Duncan. They're moving house down in the infirmary. Why don't you go see if they can use some help? Uh -uh. I don't care where you go, Percy. This moment's not here at this very moment. <laughs> get the fuck out, Percy. Well, do you leave the light on after bedtime? Because I get a little scared in the dark sometimes. If it's a strange play. <laughs> what? Stays pretty bright around here all night long. <laughs> we always keep a few lights burning out in the car, though. Shake his hand, come on. You can see it. Well, I'm so used to Michael Clark Duncan playing like really tough guys. Is he retarded, you figure? Mm -hmm. Looks like they send us an imbecile to execute. Imbecile or not, he deserves to fry for what he done. Make your blood curdle. So, I'm already under the impression he did not do whatever he is being in prison for. Jesus. Uh, maybe he didn't do it. <laughs> oh, man. I couldn't have it. I tried to take it back, but it was too late. What does that mean? Linda's not so well, Paul. My headaches. Got laid up with another one yesterday. There's a lot of sick people in this movie. Like it or not, the wife of the governor of this state has only one nephew, and his name happens to be Percy Whitmore. Oh, God. Look again. He's right. 
ty. Ha, <laughs> ha, Oh, I want, I want one. <laughs> so adorable. My cats would destroy that mouse. Oh my God. They've had to remove everything to get this one mouse. Three grown men. How smart are they mouse? <laughs> <laughs> hard to find, man. What the shit? Dude, they're all playing with the mouse. Don't don't attack it. is a nutbag. Men under strain can snap. That's why our job is talking, not yelling. I think of it as a bucket of piss to drown rats in. You are such an asshole. We all know who your connections are, Percy. You ever threaten a man on this block again, we all gonna have a go. Job be damned. Get all this shit back in the restraint room. You are cluttering up my mind. <laughs> that guy... It is so unlikable, but that, whoever that actor is, he's really, really good at playing that repulsive asshole. You have anything to say before your sentence is carried out? I'm going to fried chicken dinner with gravy on the taters, and I want to shit in your hat. <laughs> One more remark like that, I'll have Van Hay rolled on too for real. Okay, we'll be doing this for real tomorrow night. You ever try not to laugh in church when something funny gets stuck in your head? It's the same goddamn thing. Yeah, this is a little, this is a little worse. One of the witnesses showed up a day early. <laughs> yeah, the mouse. Is is this movie really about the mouse? You think if a man sincerely repents on what he'd done wrong, that he might get to go back to the time that was happiest for him, and live there forever? A fascinating question. Soak the sponge. Conduct electricity right to the brain. Got it. Taking notes for John in the future. Roll on, two. God, the sound design on this. Again? Oh, my God. Oh, that is brutal. Adios, Chief. Drop us a card from hell. Let us know if it's hot enough. <laughs> what the f you disrespectful asshole. He's square with the house again. So keep a goddamn hands off him. What's up his ass? You. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want brutal spot for the next execution. You sadistic asshole. And if I say no, I might just stick around for good. Make me a career of this. Oh, you sleazy, slimy scum. I hate this guy so much. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I don't tame me that mouse. <laughs> we say that. I don't tame me that mouse. He's smart, Mr. Jingles. Mr. Jingles. <laughs> watch, watch, watch. Oh, what a cute little guy. I love him so much. <laughs> That's so smart, Mouse Dale. Like he a circus mouse or something. Don't I get out of here. He's going to make me rich. You just watch it. See if you don't do that. This asshole better not do anything to that goddamn mouse, I swear to God. It's a tumor, Paul. A brain tumor. Oh, no. It's the size of a lemon, they said. That's not good at all. I can't think how to tell my wife. 
She's going to die. It's kind of this uh, interesting theme of like death being the ultimate punishment. <laughs> God, I can feel it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've never had it. <laughs> There's been some painful stuff before, you know? Is that the kid tattoo? <laughs> Holy shit, is that Sam Rockwell? You've been declared competent, mm -hmm. son. Means you're gonna ride the light, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Bussy>. <laughs> shut up, give us a hand here. <laughs> is this an act or something? No. Yep, it's an act. Ouch. Oh, no. Percy, get your hillbilly ass in there. Warn me. Warn me. Warn me. You warning me. You warning me. Well, come on. What the hell, Percy? You go get Dean and Harry looked at, make sure they're all right. Percy, you make the report to the warden for me. Start out by saying the situation's up. God damn, this fucking balls. <laughs> Well, what about you? You're about ready to collapse. Ah, uh, I got the mile. Till you all come back. God damn, Tom Hanks really is a great actor, huh? Oh, no. Oh. My God. Boss, I need to see you down here. <laughs> oh, man. What do you want, John Coffey? Just to help. Oh my god. What are you doing? What is going on right now? Oh my god, he's got some type of superpower. What? Oh shit. <laughs> What the? No! <laughs> help! 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 Yeah, for Christ's sake, shut up! <laughs> what is going? We are like an hour into this movie. What is happening here? <laughs> Oh, does he like absorb the illness and disperse it afterwards? Didn't that help it? I just took it back, so. Oh my god, he was trying to save those two girls. Go take a piss, Paul. Go take a beautiful piss, Paul. <sighs> Oh shit, he was trying to save those two. <laughs> Honey, we're making love. I feel like that should feel left field. What just happened? It's such a surprise, but it's like weirdly blended in with the actual tone of the movie. Press of direction. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Nice work there, Paul. <laughs> My man. <laughs> like, that's a weird two seconds to throw in to <laughs> go to the morning. It's funny. I'm not sure what I'm sure of. What are you 
investigating. Gary Sin Oh my god, it's a Forrest Gump reunion. Coffee. You came up here to see if I think he did it at all. One seldom sees a less ambiguous case. He was found with the victims in his arms. And yet you defended him. Everyone is entitled to defense. But he didn't believe. Are there any sick people in this home he can heal? We had us a dog. Please, sir. Yikes. I suppose he's lucky not to be completely blind. We get down on our knees and thank God for that much at least. Can John Coffee heal that eye? Is Coffee guilty? Yes, he is. Nah, man, Coffee's totally innocent. You didn't tell him the ball story. She wanted to thank you for helping me. Helping you with what? <laughs> oh, was your missus pleased? <laughs> Several times. <laughs> <laughs> can I get deal, Mr. Jacobson? It's yours, John. You can do with it as you please. Oh, he's so nice. What about me? Don't you hold that on me, you big dummy. You'll keep a civil tongue on my block. <laughs> oh, you prick. <laughs> Piss on me. Some bitch said with his back to the door, killed by a drunk. Oh, my. It's how's a body a history lesson. <laughs> Thank you, Wild Bill. <laughs> Damn, he is very believable. <laughs> All I want to is a little cornbread, you motherfuckers. All I want to is a little cornbread. There are some disgusting ass people in this movie. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, man. You've gone done it. Hey, I'll grab a few things. It's a big day for you and Mr. Jingles. Important folks heard about your mouse. Want to see him perform. Not just prison guards, either. One's a politician all the way from the state capitol, I believe. What? <laughs> Is it really happening? This is great. <laughs> Mr. Jingles. Oh, they love Mr. Jingles. They laugh over there, they cheer, they clap their hands. <laughs> well, that's just aces. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Oh, no. Come on now. Let's just have. Oh, wow. <laughs> Taste of your own medicine. But smell you. <laughs> oh, God. Look, you don't piss it, man. Oh, my God. All right, now. Don't touch me. This is not going to amount to something good. You talk about this to anyone, I get you all fired. What happens on a mile stays on a mile. Always has. But there's been a bunch of embarrassing ass shit that's happened. You live out in the woods. Mr. Django, he be... He be scared to live out in the big woods. No. How about Mouseville? Tourist attraction down in Florida. Tallahassee, I think. Is that right, Paul? Tallahassee? Yeah, yeah. Tallahassee. I think they're making shit up. They asked to play it for Mr. Django. <laughs> You're gonna be as sick as Miles a dog. Oh. Mr. Jingles. Oh, there it is. No! What the fuck? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, oh no. You killed my mom. Well, I knew I'd get him sooner or later. It's just a matter of time, really. <laughs> you fucking cruel bastard! <laughs> oh, 
fucking believe it. Give him to me. Oh, yes, Chuck Hopper. <laughs> I completely forgot about it. <laughs> tail. Look at the tail. <laughs> Mr. Jingle's lips. <laughs> he did that to my balls. <laughs> That means it works, right? <laughs> Mr. Jingles is alive. Sean Cover. What did you do? I hit Dale's mouse. Your circus mouse. Gonna live in a mouse city down in. Bad. He mean. He step on the old mouse. I took it back to This movie's gonna be so fucking depressing in the end, isn't it? <laughs> you come along with me. You fellas go on back to your village game. <laughs> oh, you got some black Jesus in prison. Oh, there's still like night of our fist go. Oh. Uh, is it Oh, you better whoop that boy's ass. Don't forget about Mouthfield. There's no such place. Just thought you should know. What a prick. Oh, he's not gonna wet it, is he? Oh, uh, you f asshole. Oh, it's so infuriating. Can't you, like, feel or see that it's not wet? There's no, tra no water trail. Roll on two. Oh, that is horrifying. Ah, it's, it's, like, it's connected to it in some way. Oh, man, he did it. You what, you son of a bitch! Oh, poor Dale. You are one of the worst characters in history, man. I can feel it from here. You can hear it. He out of the now, though. No matter how it happened, Dale the lucky one. Who else? Mr. Jango. He ran away under the door. Don't think he'd be back. Aw. Awful time now, boss. Dog time. I would it's commit my life to understanding what the hell this John Coffee guy is capable of doing. You could take him to heal James Cromwell's wife. She's not herself anymore. She swears. She swears? Just pops out. Most awful language you can imagine. She doesn't even know she's doing it. Words like damn hell shit. I'm thinking I don't know what I would do if he were gone. I'm also thinking I'm gonna have the boys over tomorrow. Well, you sure do know how to cook chicken. He's gonna, he's gonna pitch the idea, huh? Sneak a sick woman into a sale bar? Oh, no, 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 no. Hal would never stand for that. You know him. He wouldn't believe anything even if it fell on him. So you're talking about taking John Coffee to her? How would you guys not be obsessed with understanding what's going on? Come on, boss. I've been, I've been good all day. It's hot in here. I'm just saying, I'm, y'all get to drink. I'm thirsty. 
Man, no one else could have played Michael Clark Duncan's role. No one else could have played it. Maybe Al Pacino. I'll be good. <laughs> what are you doing? This asshole. No sympathy. I'll give you a few hours of quiet time, Percy, so you can reflect on what you did to Dale. Yeah, and if you're lonely, just think about Miss Leadpipe. <laughs> I'll take y'all a few hours for you back. Whoa! You bad man. Oh no 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 no. Why are you still tying back? Boss look. They did not run this by him now. We are here to help. Help what? I don't understand. You're just gonna, you're gonna have to trust me. Give some context, man. I don't want to get a shot. <laughs> Daddy! Don't you go in there. Daddy! Don't you do it. Daddy! You just be quiet now. This guy is so nice. <laughs> Breaks my heart. <laughs> What's your name? John Coffee Man. Like to drink. It's a hell of a tumor. Much better. Did I have the X ray? Yes. Yes. It was clear. There was no tumor. <laughs> oh. Poor guys, you cried about his wife's whole movie. <laughs> oh. uh, Jesus. <laughs> no, you can't. What a weird spiritual experience this story is here. Let me out of his nut coat. In a minute. Now. Right now. I want out now. Oh. Bitch slap. Will Smith slap. Let bygones be bygones. Hmm? No one ever need know about that except the people in this little room. What Those happens on a mile stays on a mile. Technically, still on the mile. Oh, he's gonna transfer it. What's gonna happen? What's about to happen? I have no idea what's going on right now. What you looking at, you lamp noodle? You wanna kiss my ass? You wanna suck my dick? Oh, he's gonna kill him, isn't he? What the hell is going on? I saw in his heart when he grabbed my arm. You see for yourself. Oh. <laughs> Damn, not gonna lie, that those biscuits look really good. Girl, you heard your mama. Damn. 
This creepy son of a bitch did it. You love your sister. You're making a noise. You know what happens? I'm gonna kill her instead of you. That's the way it is every day. That's the way it is all over the world. Oh man, he doesn't want to live, does he? Does this have anything to do with what happened in my house? No. Interesting time for some quirky no music. Oh my God, has he been condemned to the mental hospital? Does hell know that coffee's innocent, I mean. Does he have the influence to do something about this? No. If it can't help, don't tell him. And McKillen, Sam Rockwell, never get a testi testimony. Meatloaf be nice, mashed taters, gravy, okra, maybe some of the fine cornbread your missus make. If she don't mind. I have to ask you something very important now. I know what you're going to say. You don't have to say it. When I stand before God and he asks me why, did I kill one of his true miracles? What am I going to say? You tell God the Father it was a kindness you done. Kindness. I want it to be over and done with. I'm tired of never having me a buddy to be with. It must be something that you want. I ain't never see me a flick of show. I'm in heaven. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I'll be all right, fellas. This here's the hard part. I'll be all right in a little while. He's comforting them. I dream Mr. Jingles got down to that place Boss Howell talked about. That Mousefield place. I dream there's kids. <laughs> And how they laughed at his tricks, my. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> They's laughing too. I put my arms around them and set them on my knees, and there's no blood coming out of their head, and he's just fine. <laughs> Mr. Jacob rolled that spoon. <laughs> how we did laugh at the bus we was. <laughs> There's lots of folks here that hate me. It's like bees stinging me. I feel how we feel then. We don't hate you. <laughs> Can you feel that? Kill him twice, you boys. Oh, fuck you. This is Arson. Wipe your face before you stand up, Dean. Yes, sir. Christ. Does it hurt yet? I hope it does. I, I hope it hurts like hell. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry for what I am. Please, boss, don't put that thing up on my face. Don't put me in the dark. Oh. Right in the dark. This doesn't feel real. All right, Joe. You <laughs> think like something's gonna get him out of it? <laughs> it's like my heart's just all numb right now. <sighs> I'm like mad right now. May God have mercy on your soul. You have to give the order. Oh no. We're <laughs> on two.
fucking shit, man. Doesn't, it doesn't feel right, you know. <laughs> doesn't feel fair. Doesn't feel fair. I just couldn't do it anymore after that. It's... You said you and Jan had a grown son in 1935. Do you feel up to taking a walk? Listen to a story for three hours. I'll go about that one detail, huh? There. Hey, wake up, old fella. Wake up. No shit. Oh, it isn't. It can't be. Come over here, boy. <laughs> what? The... There can't be Mr. Jingles. <laughs> How is he still kicking? Go on. You can do it. This isn't exactly the Mouseville we had in mind, is it? We make do, don't we, old fella? He doesn't care. He's content. I think when we electrocuted Dale, whatever magic was inside of him just leapt into my tiny friend here. John had to give me a part of himself so that I could see for myself what Wild Bill had done. Uh. A part of the power spilled into me. He infected you with life? It's a good word as any. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 108 years old, Elaine. Whoa! I've had to see my friends and loved ones die off through the years. You'll die too. It's my punishment for letting John Coffey ride the lightning, for killing a miracle of God. Oh, that is tragic. That is so tragic. Mr. Jenkins? Where you been? Hey. If he could make a mouse live so long, how much longer do I have? We each owe a death. Sometimes the green mile seems so long. Very poetic. Wow. That was a hell of a movie. Holy balls. I love that. I I love that movie. That's a Stephen King movie again. I didn't know that. All right, let's uh let's chat about it. Jesus. <laughs> Oof, got to take that in a little bit. Alrighty. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's pretty late at night. The movie's over three hours. It's like a, t a tad bit over three hours, but it, it went by pretty fast for me. The only time I became aware of the runtime when I was like, I am starting to be a little bit tired, and I am hungry. <laughs> so when that started kicking out, like, okay. Yeah, so forgive me for the people who stick around for the actual review portion. Yeah, I'm a, I, I am. I, I might not speak for as extensively as I normally prefer to, given uh, the nature of a, of, of a film like this, which had so much going for it, and uh, one that I loved. And honestly, you know, like I was kind of joking, talking about it at the beginning, and, and you know, when seeing people like Gary Sinise pop up in here, knowing Frank Darabont directed it. Uh, Tom Hanks uh, starring in this. I was, yeah, this did feel like the perfect third film, so I'm glad this was the one that was voted for after watching. Because I watched some other films in between that we put up on this channel, but, you know, like Forrest Gump, Shawshank, and then this. And honestly, you know, like I, I feel like most people would probably go 
with one of those as their favorite between the three. I feel like a I, like my 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 hunch is telling me I'm I'm going to be in in the unpopular opinion here, but I I feel like this is my favorite of the three. Uh, I I personally prefer this one out of the three, and I don't really want to spend my time comparing as to why. Just this one really clicked for me. I I, I like the darkness of it, yet it still had those qualities of leaning into love and light things that really play on my tender my tender heart at times <laughs> and so yeah and i really thought this was a, a beautiful ex- it was an experience you know and i, I loved story structure wise of you're, you're setting up all these things in place and I, and i think i said it out loud like where is this movie going exactly <laughs> like i i don't really know what's what's becoming of any of this or what it's all going to ultimately unify into, even though I was enjoying it right from the beginning. And I was like kind of falling in love with the, with the, with the whole mood and and tone of it all throughout. I, when, by the time it came together and, you know, halfway through once the supernatural element of it, you know, like you start seeing the religious symbolisms and, and what they're playing on. But even if you, which I'll, I'll dive into a little bit of that, but even if you remove a lot of those qualities, I still feel like that even if you're not picking up on what are some very obvious, you know, religious connections and symbolisms, for crying out loud, the guy's called John Coffey, JC, Jesus Christ, healer, you know, c- condemned when he shouldn't be like this there's there's a lot of you know christian allegories and they talk you know bluntly about god and will my soul be saved and there's like things about here that feel like pontius pilate related you know i i I don't identify anymore as, as a catholic but i did grow up in the catholic church for for a large portion of my life and you know and so, and I feel like a lot of people are familiar with the story of Jesus Christ anyway, even if you're not Christian, Catholic, or whatever denomination you belong to or don't, uh, I'm sure you've heard the story before, right? So yeah, there's some obvious, very, very obvious religious allegories, but I thought very well told. And even if you remove that, like just from a filmmaking level, I think the pacing is strong. Obviously, when a movie's this long, you're going to have people who will at times be like, yeah, this is... This is long. This is this is going on a while. But to me, I enjoyed every moment of it. Like there isn't a story point or a scene that bored me whatsoever. Or I never felt, you know, even though I questioned, you know, I wonder where where this is all going to ultimately land. I never questioned where it was. You know, like when when's this movie gonna get going? <laughs> when's the train gonna start moving along here? You know, because sometimes you can feel that with films. Like, come on, come on, don't don't be self indulgent here. And I didn't find it self indulgent. You know, that knowing especially that's a Stephen King book, I imagine there's probably even way more in that book than what's in this film itself. And I think that they everything they included, I thought was very much necessary. Uh, I loved. Absolutely love the performances of both Tom Hanks and Michael Clark Duncan. Like, there's so much going on for both of those characters without it even having to fully be said. While while more stuff gets said in a more overt way later on in this film, but you're like, it's a three hour movie. You've earned some expositional dialogue to just state everything by that point. Uh, I I think that. Um, you know, like with, with starting with Tom Hanks, his character right from the beginning, you just instantly get like this is an amazing Tom Hanks performance to me. I saw the movie Elvis. I really like the movie Elvis. I know I haven't talked about it at all on this channel. And it is just kind of fun to see like, well, I thought Tom Hanks was good. I never just saw Tom. I never just saw the character he was playing in that film. I think maybe the style and some of the choices in the makeup, I I just couldn't get swept up in specifically his performance. It was one of those weird things where I had a dichotomy of he's doing a great job, yet 
I don't ever just see the character. I'm fully aware this is Tom Hanks the whole time. So to to go back like a couple of decades earlier and see this performance, which is not too long after Forrest Gump, uh, I I thought he was very believable, and I and I and I it was really quick into it that I just got swept up in the character itself. Like his character, you could feel the the there's this connection of empathy between you know John Coffey and Paul Edgecomb is his last name or Paul. Uh, yeah, you have this connection between Paul the Apostle. You, you have this connection of John Coffey and Paul, and there's they both have this empathetic quality about them. And and I, I loved just just how worn out, how weary Tom Hanks' character was in this film right from the get go, beyond struggling with some physical ailment with the with the with the UTI problem. He was someone who you could tell. Like because of the kind of character he was with the job that he held, there was an empathetic approach to the characters in in the prison, you know. And there's a there's a lot of commentary to be made about the prison system, you know. I feel like that talk comes up way more now than ever. I mean, especially like for probably back then, people probably didn't give a shit, you know. Uh, but you know, there's a the the death penalty is, is something that I've heard debated about many times. And then here, you know, when you're like, do you even get a chance for reform? Do you get a chance for penance? Like, do you do you get a, a proper chance? To, and that empathetic quality, I thought, held so strong with with Tom Hanks's performance, and how much the toll on this was taking on him. And you watch that toll, it so like subtly and internally take over him as this movie progresses. And you know that his like, even if I'm not a religious man. That debate that he has with himself at the end of I've clearly met a miracle man. What what the fuck am I gonna tell God as to like how I did not even fight to save this man's life? That's just uh it was heartbreaking. And and then with John Coffey as this, you know, beyond the religious points, you could see you know. It, it wasn't something that, because, you know, the misplacement of crime, criminal activities, and, and there are stories that, you know, uh, other movies have told them uh, of different versions of stories of this. But, it, yes, we all know. It's not something that just because we all know should just be brushed on the rug. Yeah, yeah, we know. It's not something that should just be brushed on the rug. But there have been a lot of terrible injustices done to black men in, like, throughout history and then to this day even, where your guilty, <laughs> just presumed guilty <laughs> right away, you know, and then also for this situation of what happened to these children, of it being blamed on this black man, and just, it, it, you know, instantly, yep, he did it. Granted, you know, because I had to kind of fight with myself there in the end. When, you know, the William, I think that's William Sadler and how he was protesting and saying, kill him twice at the end, you know, like the truth never came out and based off of the optics around the situation, because I immediately didn't believe John Coffey killed those girls. But then the way the movie handled the flashback on the perspective of how the bodies were discovered, I was like, oh, did he kill them? (laughs) Because it it certainly looks that way. It, it, it It would appear that way without knowing all the the additional context on top of that. So I, I thought this movie was going to go down more that path of, of commentating on that. But I think because you do have John Coffey just as a black man falsely convicted, condemned to death of this, like a lot of that commentary is being taken care of just with the picture it has painted around that already. And, and I was more surprised by all the religious connections that the film was drawing throughout the, the the Christian parallels. I know I'm hopping all over the place. I tend to do this with a movie that's this effective. It's not going to be smooth stream here of me talking about it. I'm going to, I'm going to go around. Uh, Cause yeah, his uh, Michael Clark Duncan's performance was so powerful. Like instantly you get the character, you know, and Michael Clark Duncan, you know, I, I haven't seen, like so much of the the work the man has done, you know, like to give you an idea, the last time I saw a performance of him is when I did my first rewatch of the movie Daredevil. Uh, I watched the director's cut 
And like, that's more of the Michael Clark Duncan I kind of know. The, the, the tough guy, Michael Clark Duncan. And so to see this performance here where instantly there is this, this character with so much soul in him and so much, again, the word empathy comes to mind. And, and like this, this giant, lovable teddy bear who has so much pain and, and while is so while can find so much love and kindness in this world, he's so isolated, you know, like to be in this position, just this, it, it was almost akin to kind of akin to, to, to I'm using it lightly to, to what like Martin Scorsese wanted to explore, but last temptation of Jesus Christ, like, what if you really were this guy? How, how fucking horrible must it actually be to to be this person? You know, to, to really have to have that weight of the abilities you have, this ability to connect, yet how much pain and suffering does that come with? And Michael Clark Duncan embodies that because as much hurt as he had, it, there was never this... I guess the word I'm looking for is there's never this rage that he projected onto people. Like he never wanted to, as much as punishment was evoked, justice. I could say that's justice, you know, like that that ironic karma, <laughs> that fate, because there are similarities in the Sam Rockwell character and the Percy character. It's like one is, it seems like way worse than the other. Like one gets to get away and do criminal things, but in the guise of, you know, of the law. And and then you have Sam Rockwell, who is just the, the scum of the earth. And I, I thought that justice was well-deserved at that moment with the way the, their fates ultimately turned out. Uh, but, you know, it's I, it, that, that what, when, you're, when I, I try to put myself in the position of like what Michael Clark Duncan's going through, I was just feeling like mad, you know, before before the handshake came up because there's been there was so much about the connection of the importance of the handshake at the electric chair that uh, I was just like mad when, when he was about to be anything about be. I'm either going to like be moved to tears or be really angry when it comes to watching someone be treated unfairly, you know, and then him sort of being so accepting of death. And then as he's being walked down the green mile, he's looking out for them and their emotions and the the, the, the four people who, who do, does feel akin to, you know, the, the, the Roman soldiers um, who didn't want to, but had to, crucify christ and he's looking out for them you know and and he's not wishing ill will when he is in the electric chair he's not wishing ill will on any of the people who are you know condemning him in the crowd what is that thing that jesus said forgive them father for they not know what they do or something like i don't know the quote all right <laughs> so yeah they having Having those characters there, I thought was really strong, and and I I really liked. I think the actor's name is David Morse, the uh, br uh, brutal brute. Is his name brutal brute? The you know the, the you guys know what I'm talking about. He was great. Like the, I I liked that there was this soft, lonely quality to the man as well, uh, where there there was like a, this sort of apathetic nature to him, and he was his. Excellent. I really enjoyed his performance a lot. I've seen him in, in like other films, but uh, this is the first time I think I've ever seen him in a movie where I really am gravitated to the work that he's doing. And also as a strong support system to Tom Hanks' character, Barry Pepper, another actor who I've usually seen play like tougher people. I thought maybe not the most richly written character because I, I it's like it seemed like a lot of the writing was going like David Morse, Tom Hanks few of the prisoners the actor who played Dell, fantastic because there's a, there's a way to do that performance that could feel very off-putting and you're like you're kind of like an icky guy but i was very much endeared to him throughout and it was heartbreaking to see what happened to him uh and, and the way how he died as well so all the characters i just thought were really great everyone was fleshed out so well and, and there were so many moving there's so many parts that were so moving to me in a way just by like a, a tone poem of a sequence of how, how they would strike it, you know? Like when it came to James Cromwell's wife 
and, and the scene where and she is is being saved by John Coffey. That scene in particular, I, I remember having a, a, a thought of, we're always hearing about the dying wife. I don't really, I don't know this this woman. I have, I don't know her at all. And a lot of times for me to be like emotionally moved by something, I feel like I got to know who the person is. Like I understand that anything with an affliction of tumor or cancer can be a very relatable thing because most of us either know someone who has dealt with that or, or has had someone personally deal with that. So I understand the context of that is a very sensitive thing and a very serious and real relatable thing. But at the, from a movie standpoint, from characters, I'm like, I don't know this woman. So I don't really, I like, do, will, will I really care about what's going on? Yet that whole scene I, I thought was so powerful and so so touching. It just really got to my heart there. And it's because of, I think, this beautiful direction by Frank Darabont. Like the way he he managed to handle so many different things because this whole thing, like with the the powers being revealed, the, the ability to heal, that comes in so late into this movie. And there's really nothing that's foreshadowing that he can do that. Like nothing. Yet it didn't feel left field to me. It felt like it fit. It worked. And to me, that speaks volumes on how strong of a direction Frank Darabont was able to strike with this film. Because in a lot of movies, you you would think that, and maybe there's a more subtle ways it was foreshadowed, because you, you strike some type of whimsy fan, fantasy-like elements with Mr. Jingles, who was a standout and was amazing, and kind of this angelic supplement in a, in a lot of ways, you know, like... For Dell, or even to carry on, uh, I'm. <laughs> I would like to look up stuff about Mr. Jingles. I feel like there'd be a lot of good think pieces about Mr. Jingles on the internet. Uh, so I feel like you know, like have there's the way they struck that like funny little quirkiness, but something that felt a little bit heightened about it, but never went too heightened to the point where it didn't feel like unrealistic. But there was this sort of you know. With fantasy tone, I would say, not so much execution, but tone and a whimsy to the carrot to to Mr. Jingles that breathed a lot of life into it. So that way, when you do have the fantasy side of it, where they go they go full su- supernatural with the reveal of his powers, it somehow worked. And that's when I knew this film is doing something really special <laughs> because. In a lot of movies, if you were to introduce something that late, it could feel kind of jarring. But because it does come as a surprise, it does come as a big reveal. It does come like, whoa, what the hell? Yet blended well. And it never felt like the movie just took a big turn into something different. You know, granted, there are things about it that I, I thought could have been amped up with a little bit more writing you know some of the relationship with tom hanks and his wife she really felt like you know the, just the most generic wife character i wasn't really watching this movie going i want more from the wife i want to see more of her however whenever did check into her i'm like yep it's just tom hanks at home after work in the green mile and then she just shows up in the background to talk to him that's usually how it goes uh you know there's a couple of scenes that don't go that way with her but yeah, I felt like that was underwritten. And you see like the other prison guards, like Barry Pepper and the other guy who's worked with Frank Darabont a bunch. He's on The Walking Dead. I believe he's also in The Mist. Uh, he He's a, another performer that I'm like, yeah, not a, not a vastly richly written character, yet the actor really elevated that performance a lot where I, I really liked whenever he was on screen. Uh, I, I did find it kind of odd that there wasn't mu- like... I, I want to like chalk it up to the time period, but I don't know. It, to me, I think if you're witnessing some miraculous shit going down, like a freaking mouse being crushed to death, and then boom, healed and it's fine, you probably want to you probably want to like talk about it. You probably want to go, what was that? What was going on? I felt if there was one thing I felt was missing from this movie was. Was that scene? They tried acknowledging it at when they are having uh, when, when Tom Hanks does have them over for lunch, and and being like, I just thought we could go the rest of the year without talking about this. I didn't. I was hoping you wouldn't bring it up. I'm like, come on, 
you want to talk about it. You got to tell you. I, don't, I just can't imagine this scenario where you just want to be like, oh, I'm just going to act like that never happened. No, no, no. There's got I, one of them in the group had to have been like, we have to discuss this because this is this is crazy. <laughs> like, that's some crazy shit. So that was one part of it that I thought was missing to me. Um, but other than that, you know, uh, everything from a technical standpoint, I thought the music was excellent. The score was very touching. Uh, the the cinematography was great. You know, I think the way how at times you could weave in and out of something that felt very angelic to something that could feel almost borderline horror and haunting uh, with it. I, I loved the, you know, as, as much as you do do some flashbacks and, and, and switch locations, it was primarily a very contained movie that took place at the Green Mile. It was very contained in that regard. You know, I, I, I feel like Shawshank Redemption, which also very contained movie, takes place at a prison. The prison felt so vast that this actually weird this this actually felt more contained to me th- than Shawshank, and I, I really loved just like checking in with that one little strip, the corridor. I was just checking in right there. I thought it was awesome. So everything I thought they did here was great. I loved the writing. I loved so much about this movie and yeah out of the three it's definitely my favorite one and this wasn't my smoothest talk i usually try to like say something in there in the early on to, to clarify that it might not be the smoothest but then i usually feel like no 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 i did an all right job in the end this time around i don't feel like i, I did as good of a job as i normally do it's definitely felt a little, a little bit clunky here in my discussion but yeah if you want my just bottom line opinion i thought everything about it was great just a couple of missing points and some amazing performances and uh i did like the the religious undertones and something that felt like it could have especially with the the parallels you're drawing here could have felt obnoxiously on the nose and yet it never it never crossed that line to the point of like oh god guys i get it stop you know like sometimes movies do that where you you are you do get to the point where like i get it you're fucking clever I, that, that, this movie never got to me at that point because at the end of the day it seemed like what came first was the emotion and was the characters so due to that I really I really respect this one a lot I loved it I thought it was great thank you guys for voting for this one and yeah you can subscribe leave a like that would be very much appreciated and hey talk with y'all soon